a lot of uh, wake up back to financial contingencies. Uh, this video, we want to look at the statement of cash flow, whereby we are just going to look at uh, the reconciliation of credit profit before taxation with the cash uh, generated from operations. So we are going to let, uh, look at that not only uh, of uh, reconciliation of credit profit before taxation with cash generated from operations. So uh, we have a question that we have here, which is question four on this question paper. And it reads that the following information appeared in the books of uh, Aspect Limited, and then we are given a statement of comprehensive uh, uh, income for the end of 2017. And uh, we go down, we see that we have the statement of financial position as a 32 2017, uh, which we have here. So uh, also we have got additional information whereby we are given the property plan and the payment information. Uh, going uh, to the next page, uh, we are now given the question whereby we are saying uh, we are only going to look at a uh, 4.2.1. Which is at the uh, not which is the reconciliation of profit before tax with cash generated from operation. And our question has got our eight marks. So uh, this is uh, what we have. Then uh, we go to the other section now. We see that this is our other section. Mm -hmm. And we are going to start with net profit uh, before tax. So here we are saying net profit uh, before tax. So we're going to the information that we have to check uh, which uh, net profit before tax figure do we have. So we go to the beginning of the question, see that we've got um, profit before tax, which is here, and we've got uh, 15,000. So we have to, we have to start with our 15,000. So we can uh, just uh, uh, include our 15,000, so wherever you're seeing uh, 15,000 in the last column. Then from there, we, uh, we make some adjustments. So we can just say adjusted, adjusted for. And we are listing adjustments that we have. So here we're going to uh, look for non cash items that we have in the question and adjust for them. So remember, here what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, remove all the all the uh, non cash items uh, from uh, the net profit figure because uh, in the calculation of uh, in the preparation of statement of, of cash flow, we are going to uh, uh, make adjustments in terms of uh, the actual cash movement in and out of business. So the figure that we are going to start with, which is the profit before tax, which is 15,000, there are some adjustments that we have made uh, 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 to arrive in that figure, which are non-cash items, like we've got depreciation. Uh, if there's loss of disposal also, if you've got items like provision for paid tax, they are non-cash items that have no actual cash movements. So uh, we have to uh, uh, readjust them and remove them from that figure of 15,000. That we, we remain with adjustments that are only require uh, cash movements. And then also, uh, we are also going to adjust for uh, our ex expenses, uh, interest on expense. Why do we adjust for interest and expense? It's just a disclosure procedure. We remove it at this stage when we are when we are reconciling and we readjust them, uh, them again in the uh, statement of cash flow as a disclosure procedure. So uh, here we are saying uh, we are going to look for depletion, but depletion, if you come here, you would say that we are told that it could have other courts is depreciated for 6,000. So we have 6,000 depreciation. That is uh, that was adjusted for us to arrive in the figure for 15,000. So remember, when it was adjusted initially, it was subtracted other other expenses. And uh, to remove it, we are supposed to end it so that we remove it. So we go to the uh, adjustment section and we are saying uh, depreciation. And the figure that we have is 6,000. So we are just putting us. So remember, we're saying we are adding it back so that we remove it. Uh, it first we subtracted, now we are adding. Then uh, we also check for uh, items like expenses. Uh, expenses. And obviously, the uh, we, 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 we look for items like interest. Remember, I said interest, we are going to uh, uh, add it back. At first, it was subtracted, other finance costs. And now we are adding it back so that we remove it. So, um, here we've got the finance cost. So the finance cost is representing the interest, which is 4,600. So we are going to add it back again. So we come here. Uh, we're going to say interest expense. And the figure that we have uh, is uh, 4,600, and we're saying we're adding it back. And then, um, from there, we check if you put anything again that needs to be uh, adjusted. Uh, so remember, we started with the uh, profit before tax. But if it was profit after tax, uh, we were supposed to add back again tax. But uh, in this case, it's profit before tax, so there's only for us to adjust for tax. So uh, this is uh, the adjustment that we have. Then uh, from there, we see that we have got no uh, other data cash items that we are seeing there. So we can just go and uh, uh, adjust working capital changes. So uh, 
we come here and we say wicked capital and wicked capital changes. Remember, uh, the wicked capital changes net figure should come in. If we admit the adjustments of net wicked capital changes in this column, so wicked capital, we know that uh, when we are calculating wicked capital, yeah, uh, when we are calculating wicked capital, we say wicked capital is equal to our current assets minus our current liabilities. This is the formula for calculating wicked capital. So in the same wicked capital changes, we are saying elements of uh, uh, current assets and elements of current liabilities. And basically, we are looking at a uh, movement in terms of our trading stock. As a, a current asset movement of uh, trading other paper, trading other receivables as, as data, other current assets. The other current liabilities, we are we are obviously looking for changes in trends and uh, other payables. So uh, we check. So if there is an increase uh, in in the assets, if there is an increase in the assets, we are going to show it as a negative. But if there is a decrease, uh, if there is a decrease, we are going to show it as a positive. For current assets and for current liabilities, and an increase to show it as a positive and a decrease as a negative, just the opposite. So we go there to the information that we're given and we check for those uh, elements. Uh, we go to current assets, you see that other current assets we have got our inventory that we have there. So we check there in terms of inventory, we know that we were 2016 and 2017. So we check the movement whereby we are saying for inventory, uh, we are saying it's from 26,000 to, uh, to 10,000. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an increase. Of 10,000 minus 26,000, whereby we are saying so an increase of 4,000. So this is an increase of a current asset, and it's going to show it as a, as a negative. So we go there uh, and just adjust the size, whereby we are saying. Uh, we are saying uh, increase in inventory. We are saying it's 4,000 and we are going to show it uh, as a negative. It is in the current assets. Then we check for the next one. Uh, under again, current assets, we have put trade and other receivables here. Whereby we are saying it's a movement from 14,300 to 11,500. So it's a decrease. So if it's a decrease, they're going to show it as a positive. So you're going to say 14,300 minus 11,000. Uh, we see that we're going to get you 2,000. Uh, let's just uh, try to uh, verify that calculation. We'll say 11,500 and then we subtract 14, uh, we'll start by 14,300 and then we subtract to 11,500. We're going to get 2,800, so we'll answer here. Because 2,800, so it's a decrease of 2,800, which is a positive 2,800 in our uh, statement. So we come here, uh, we say decrease. In trends and other syllables, which we are saying uh, is 2800, whereby with if it's a decrease, we show it as a positive. So we go there again to check now other current liabilities. We have got trade in other payables, only that's the one that we're going to adjust for. It's from 30,400 to 40,700, which is an increase. So it's an increase of 40,420 minus 30,400, whereby we are going to get uh, your answer is. Uh, 1,220, which is an, an increase of a current liability, say we are going to show it as a positive. So we come here and we say uh, increase in trades and other payables. And the other that we have is 1,220. So there now, uh, to get the net working capital change here, we're going to say negative 4,000 plus 2,000 plus 1,220, 1,220. And then we are going to get a positive quint. So now we uh, to get your uh, your final figure here, which is going to be your uh, cash deducted from operations. This is going to be your cash deducted uh, from operations. Is the figure is supposed to come here. So to calculate it, we are now saying 15,000 plus uh, 6,000 plus 4,700 plus 20. And the final answer that we are supposed to get there uh, 
uh, is not supposed to be uh, contract on the sales and trade. So this is the figure that you're supposed to uh, carry uh, to the set rate of cash flow as under, we're going to put it under the uh, cash generated from um, operations uh, is, uh, is our cash, uh, is going to be cash generated from operations and going to fall, fall under operating activities. So basically we are saying uh, if the statement of cash flow, this figure would be under our operating activities. Is cash generated from operations. So we are going, we are going to show it uh, as uh, the whole figure that is at 25,620. Uh, so uh, this is what we've guys uh, in the preparation of uh, reconciliation of debt profit before taxation uh, with cash generated from operations. So uh, let's subscribe and share. Let's stay tuned for more typical examination questions that are going to be uploaded. As for this video, I'm signing out. Let's meet again in the next video.